Howdy y'all, DJTJ here with Inkscape tutorial number 12, Phil. Alright, the fill palette basically controls the color of any object that you that you have. So we need an object, I'll hold the control key, draw a square out. And of course you can use the swatches at the bottom to change that color pretty simply. So if you're not looking at something really advanced and you just want to pick a color out, you can use the swatches down here. If you want to change your swatches, there is a little tiny arrow on the right hand side if you click that a pop-up will come up or a drop-down and you can change that I suggest you keep it to de ink Inkscape default because it's a pretty good range of colors so to open your fill palette you can double click here in the bottom left corner where it says fill you can go to object and fill and stroke or the quick command is shift control F so this is your fill palette along the top line you will see some of the controls the first one is no paint it's the X which gets rid of the fill the next one's a flat color you'll use this majority of the time in your work the next three are gradients which we'll cover in a future tutorial then you have pattern which if you select that and go to this drop down you have a lot of choices of patterns that are preset and finally your swatches swatches are sort of a set of colors that you've used for a project so you can go back and get that exact color if you need that finally you have two buttons over here one is for solid fill and one is basically going to let you see through overlapping you'll see that a lot when you use the calligraphy tool so if I draw something like that and this first button is selected you won't be able to see any of the through any of the overlapping areas if I select this button you would be able to see through those. So let's go back to just the flat color and we'll talk about this next row of selections. These are your different types of colors that you ha can use to manipulate. The first one is RGB which is red, green, blue and to change the color here you can use this slider to adjust the red, the green input the blue input. It also has an alpha channel. The alpha channel is used when you're saving like a PNG. It's actually incorporating transparency into the color. You can also adjust the color with these um, up and down arrows and the code for that color can be found right here. You can input your own codes if you know one or if you're doing something and you come across a really awesome color and you want to make sure you keep it, that's the code for it. and It should work in any software that's using an RGB color scheme. Hue, saturation, and lightness is the next one. So once you have your color picked, you can change the hue here, the saturation of it, and the lightness. So while this might not be its own sort of color picker, you're pretty much going to be able to manipulate any color you get on this one. CMYK is more for print so if you know you're going to be printing something you might want to stay on this color palette because it's closer to what a printer is going to produce wheel is another um, layout for your colors I, I like using the wheel a lot because it gives you the ability to pick almost any color just sort of visually and finally um, CMS which CMS is for if you're trying to it's a very constrained color profile and it's if you're printing sort of in a low res environment or a low color spectrum sort of like a desktop printer you might want to use this to help um, get your colors correct but for now we'll stay with RGB the last thing I want to touch on this is the blur so blur does just what it says if you adjust this up it will blur the object you can also blur using filters but this is a super simple way to do that and finally the opacity the opacity can be lowered and even though this object is colored and you see down in the bottom left that the color is still there and we can still change the color and manipulate it however we want and you can tell by the bottom left where it says fill that's going to show you the true color of the object we don't see it 
because the opacity has been zeroed out. Now you can adjust the opacity down here or you can come back here and adjust it up. So the very first thing you always want to check is if you sit down and you go to draw a shape and you don't see anything but you see the bounding box it is drawing that shape you just have to reset the opacity to a hundred or whatever setting you would like and that about does it for the fill tool join us for Inkscape tutorial 13 stroke thanks for watching